welcome back to your geography class today's session we shall start with precipitation now what is precipitation precipitation is any form of water whether it be liquid or solid falling on the land from the sky any form of water whether it be solid or liquid falls from the sky or from the atmosphere onto the earth's crust this is known as precipitation now precipitation can be of different forms so we can have precipitation in the form of hailstones sleet snowfall rainfall fog mist frost etc however out of all of this rainfall is the most common form of precipitation so what is precipitation precipitation is the falling of water in different forms from the sky or from the atmosphere onto the ground in case of precipitation or precisely rainfall to measure rainfall we have an instrument known as the rain gauge so a rain gauge is an instrument which is used to measure the amount of rainfall so a rain gauge is like an apparatus that is made out of a glass beaker which has graduated scales on it so this graduated scaled beaker is kept in an open area almost 30 cm from the ground so that it is away from any of the ground splashes also it is kept away from buildings trees electric poles etc so that it's away from any of these hindrances otherwise it might give a wrong reading so this graduated beaker is kept in an open area almost 30 cm away from the ground now when rainfall occurs the rain water is uh, allowed to get into this beaker and this amount of uh, rainfall that is collected is uh, transferred to another jar with the help of which we can measure rainfall in terms of uh, millibars centimeters and inches so in this way we use a rain gauge to measure rainfall now all the places on earth having the same rainfall or same amount of rainfall is connected by a line called the iso heights please underline it is on page number 33 you will find iso heights iso heights are lines on the map that join the points having the same amount of rainfall in a given period so the distribution of rainfall is shown by iso heights like how in the previous class we studied about iso therms isotherms are lines joining all the places on the map having the same atmospheric temperature in the same way iso heights are lines on the map drawn to connect all those points or all those places having the same atmospheric rainfall or rainfall okay different places having the same rainfall are connected by this one line known as an iso height so the data that is collected with the help of a rain gauge can help you to calculate the monthly rainfall or daily rainfall or mean annual rainfall so all this data can be calculated with the help of a rain gauge next we shall move to another element of weather known as humidity what is humidity humidity is the amount of moisture or water vapor present in the atmosphere at a given point of time the amount of water vapor or moisture that is present in the air at any given point of time refers to or is known as the humidity of that place now humidity is measured by an instrument known as the wet and dry bulb thermometer so a wet and dry bulb thermometer is this apparatus which consists of two thermometers the dry bulb thermometer and the wet bulb thermometer now these two thermometers are kept side by side the dry bulb thermometer acts like a normal thermometer a normal celsius thermometer giving you the daily reading or the daily temperature reading of any area the wet bulb thermometer that is kept next to it is a thermometer the bulb of which is wrapped by a muslin cloth and the other side or the other end of that muslin cloth is dipped in a beaker containing distilled water now the difference between the temperatures of these two thermometers gives you the atmospheric humidity of that place okay so out of all this explanation emerges a topic known as the relative humidity what is relative humidity it is on page number 34 please underline relative humidity is the amount of water vapor present in air 
expressed as a percentage of the amount required for saturation at the same temperature in other simple words relative humidity is a relationship or a ratio between the amount of moisture that is present in the air to the amount of moisture the air can hold at that given point of time it is a ratio so relative humidity is a ratio between the amount of moisture present to the amount of moisture that air can hold at that given point of time so this is humidity next moving to another important element of weather and climate known as the atmospheric pressure now the air around us it exerts a certain amount of pressure on us this pressure is known as the atmospheric pressure which is measured in milli bars now there is an instrument known as the barometer or the barograph that is used to measure this atmospheric pressure a very peculiar characteristic of atmospheric pressure is found with in relation to height or altitude so as a person climbs up a mountain or rises up an altitude the pressure or atmospheric pressure of that region comes down or the pressure starts to reduce in simple terms when height increases the pressure decreases and vice versa in the same way atmospheric pressure has an inverse relation with temperature wherever the temperature is high the pressure will be low and where the temperature will be low the pressure will be high this is a very peculiar and very important uh, characteristic of atmospheric pressure and its relation with temperature and altitude as one rises higher in altitude the pressure of that area comes down or reduces the same thing is with temperature temperature as temperature of a place increases the pressure is said to come down or reduces so there is an inverse relation between temperature and pressure where temperature increases pressure decreases and where temperature decreases pressure increases now this peculiar characteristic leads to a very important event that takes place on earth known as the land and sea breeze let's see land and sea breeze in detail case of land and sea breeze the names themselves suggest what both these types of wind are or both these situations are so first we shall deal with sea breeze so sea breeze takes place during the day like you can see in the diagram during the day when the sun is at its peak both land and sea get heated up at the same time however water or the sea having a very high heating capacity or specific heat capacity of water being so high what happens is water takes a lot of time to heat and a lot of time to cool down this we all are aware of so when water takes so much time and land does not take so much time the land gets heated up very quickly so when land is getting heated up the air above the land it starts to warm up and it rises up warm air rises up so this warm air that has risen it leaves a vacuum or a area of low pressure over the land okay now this vacuum that has been created or this low pressure that has been created has to be displaced so we should always keep in mind that winds flow from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure this is very important winds always flow from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure now we have already studied earlier that wherever the temperature is high pressure will be low and wherever the temperature is low the pressure will be high now we know that the land is heated up so over the land we have a low pressure now from the sea sea in comparison to the land is a lot cooler because water is taking a lot of time to get heated up so cold winds from the sea start moving towards the land to displace this low pressure area okay so this breeze coming from the sea to the land brings in cold breeze from the sea side this is known as sea breeze so keep in mind sea breeze takes place during the day this type of breeze moves from high pressured sea to low pressured land okay next moving to land breeze now land breeze an, is an entirely opposite scenario in the case of land breeze what happens we already studied that land and sea after getting heated up water takes a lot of time to heat and lot of time to cool down also 
so during the entire day both land and sea were getting the equal amount of uh, heat from the sun water having a very high heating capacity this water has taken the entire day to get heated up so it is taking a lot of time to get rid of that heat so on the other hand land has already turned cold at night now what happens like i said the sea is hot so a low pressure prevails over the sea at night okay when the sun is absent at night over the sea we have a situation of low pressure created why because the sea is hot now what will happen winds from the low pressured land will start or sorry from the high pressured land where the temperature is cooler what happens winds start flowing from the land to the sea because over the sea whatever air was there it started to get warm and it started to rise creating a vacuum in that area and this has to be displaced by the cold winds coming from the land this breeze or the movement of wind from the land to the sea is known as land breeze which takes place in the night so this is land and sea breeze in detail so from this you can understand that pressure temperature and winds are all interconnected which leads us to the next very important element of weather and climate is the winds now what are winds winds are horizontal movement of air from one place to another if i talk about one place to another it should already click in your mind that winds flow from high pressured land to low pressured land very good now please underline on page number 35 you will find winds are caused by horizontal movement of air because of uneven heating of earth it all starts with temperature now uneven heating of earth is caused by the sun sun becomes the ultimate source of energy both sea and land get heated up but at different rates so because of this differential heating and cooling of the surface of the earth it results in a differential pressure areas a low pressure area and a high pressure area now winds start to flow from a high pressured area to a low pressured area this leads to the movement of winds so you know that temperature pressure and winds are all interconnected now wind there are two aspects of winds that have to be measured or kept in mind one the direction of wind and second one the speed of wind the direction of wind please underline the direction of wind is measured with the help of a wind vane while the speed of the wind is measured by an instrument known as the anemometer okay the anemometer speed of the wind is measured in kilometer per hour or meter per second okay now winds have the property of carrying uh, characteristics of a region with them like for example winds can carry heat moisture dust particles pollen grains etc with them so uh, the winds can have different characteristics depending on from which area they are flowing like for example you are already aware of all the Uh, regions of earth like we have the equatorial region we have the polar region we have the temperate region so winds moving from different areas will carry the char- uh, characteristics of those areas like for example if a wind is flowing from an equatorial area what is an equatorial area an equatorial area or an equatorial belt is it ranges from uh, 5 degrees or 10 degrees north to 10 degrees south as in an area around the equator now what is the characteristic of the equator the equator receives a direct rays of the sun throughout the year so the main characteristic that is found around an equatorial area is that the temperature of that area is very high so what happens when winds flow from an equatorial area to another area it carries the heat characteristic of that area it carries heat along with it so the winds flowing from an equatorial area will be hot winds in comparison to this or in a total contrast to this we will find that when winds are moving from polar regions now what are polar regions polar regions are regions extending from around the poles like the 90 degree north pole or the 90 degree south pole so the winds flowing from both these poles will carry the characteristics of that area now what is the characteristic of the polar regions they are extremely cold because they get extremely slanting rays of the sun as in nil to almost no rays of the sun at the 
poles so what happens the temperature being so low the winds that are flowing from that area or the temperature of that area is so low that when winds flow from that area they are cold winds in comparison to any other region of the earth so winds carry the characteristics of the places from where they are flowing now next we move to the last element of weather and climate known as cloud cover now cloud is an accumulation of tiny water droplets in the atmosphere now what happens the presence of cloud it affects the temperature of the earth how we shall see so the presence of cloud cover in the atmosphere above a particular region affects the temperature of that region like if the cloud cover is seen during a day it works as an obstacle as in it works as a hindrance if there is cloud in the sky during the day the sun's rays cannot reach us so it acts as an obstacle thus making the situation during the day a lot cooler but at night if we have cloud cover at night what happens the cloud cover again acts as a hindrance and does not allow the heat radiations to go back into the atmosphere see it is given here if we have cloud cover at night then the amount of terrestrial radiation leaving the earth's surface is reduced considerably so what happens because of this since this radiation cannot escape the earth what happens is it creates a very hot and humid type of situation making Uh, the nights all the more warmer as a result the presence of cloud cover during the day makes the day cool whereas cloud cover at night makes the night warm now the extent of cloud cover is measured by the term octa okay so these were the five or six elements the very important elements of weather and climate that determine what kind of a weather is going to prevail over a short period of time or what kind of a climatic condition is going to prevail over a long period of time um with that i think uh, we have come to an end of this chapter i hope you have understood everything if not if you have any kind of doubt you can contact me also i would request you to please go through the chapter thoroughly and you know solve any kind of issues that you have with the chapter the related assignments will be sent to you on school website please check that out and i hope you've already finished or you are up to date with all your notes in the next class we shall deal with another new chapter so till then please be very careful keep yourself at home safe and sound with your family and shall see you soon bye bye